Hello and let's talk about yet another Rafael Nadal victory at a French Open. This is his 13th victory at the clay surface of Roland Garros and his 20th Grand Slam title. With this, he has equaled Roger Federer's record of the highest number of Grand Slams won by a male player. This was a unique victory for Nadal as he had not played much this year and the conditions were different as the tournament was being held in September. He was also up against Novak Djokovic who has been in really good form this year. None of this mattered though as Nadal won a spectacular 6-0-6-2-7-5 victory against the world number one. Now there are a lot of records and numbers to parse through but today we won't be going into that or the question of who is in fact the greatest of all time. Instead, we'll talk about the factors behind the longevity and endurance of players like Rafael Nadal and his contemporaries like Roger Federer and Serena Williams. How do players competing at the top level stay on top of the game for so long? What keeps them going in addition to their love of the game? And what about Indian sportspersons? We talked to NewsClick's Leslie Xavier on these issues. Thanks, Leslie, for joining us. So, uh, Nadal, once again, crafting quite a historic victory. And uh, it's kind of uh, unbelievable almost at some level to see Nadal, of course, but also some of his contemporaries. We have Federer and Djokovic as well. But the kind of dominance that they have established over men's tennis over the past many years, especially the Nadal Federal, or whatever you say about the rivalry, that's one thing. But it's also remarkable that these two people have kind of, they've strode over, uh, they've dominated the scene for so long. So it's a very interesting question in terms of how an athlete like Nadal, also someone who's tennis that way is that physical in some senses. And how someone like that is able to sort of stay fit stay i mean he's gone through injuries of course but nonetheless he has been at the very top levels of the game and how he's managed to sort of stay at that top league for such a long time so what are your thoughts about that uh, funny bit is that when you watch nadal at the french open uh, we just i mean we, we just talk about how many sets there's no question whether he will lose or not right. so djokovic uh, i mean of course world number 1 in great form at at the moment so again every time these two have met at the, at the Grand Slam or even Nadal playing Federer at, at, at the French Open. We, there is always this question, ki, will, they, will this time that, in a, that thing happen, the impossible thing of the, these two beating Nadal at, at, at Roland Garros? But uh, it never happens. And so yesterday while we at NewsClick, when, the, when we were discussing at the desk, how to the coverage plan, the time span involved in that since 6:30 match in the evening. So uh, we were saying it would go. So I I predicted four sets because I was giving Djokovic the credit, but Nadal had other ideas and yeah, what a match! I mean, it came out with purpose and just just destroyed Djokovic in the first two sets. Third set there was some semblance of a fight and so uh, it's. Uh, Last, I mean, decade and a half, if you look at Nadal's, I mean, owning the clay courts of Paris, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's uh, surreal because tennis or a cross sport, any sport for that matter, we haven't seen that kind of a dominance ever. Mm -hmm. Even when you look at, I mean, yeah, of course, in tennis, it has happened with Roger Federer, who has won 20 Grand Slams, but he has not owned a single Grand Slam like the way Nadal has done. 13 is a huge number. We are, I mean, the previous generation, the record holders, Sampras, for instance, or before that, Bjorn Borg. So we are talking about five, six Grand, grand Slams at the, at the most. And then the record was before Federer, it was 12 Grand Slams. Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, this, this generation of players, uh, the big three that we speak about, they have mm -hmm. stepped up the idea of being on top of the game to another level altogether, and uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's a mix of a lot of factors. Right. And first and foremost, I would like to mention the the, the development in the sports science. Mm -hmm. So these athletes, I mean these uh, tennis players, they are on tour almost 365 days a year. In fact, they don't have a break either because. The winter right. break that they get, it's, it's actually, I mean, apart from a small family time or whatever, they get into training for the next season. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a cyclic process. So they, mm -hmm. the bodies go through constant competition, constant building, rebuilding, right. Right. rest. Rest is also training. So there is specific science involved in, in, in training these athletes to be at the top. And the top three of tennis that we talk about, they take it to another level altogether. So long back, and we in India have an example of 
uh, a tennis player being on top of the game. Uh, I mean, of course, not comparable to the top three, but Leander Pace has been uh, there on the world tour ever since I followed tennis. So late 80s, he got into Davis Cup, and then right. of course, he at at the, at that stage he was focusing on the singles game, and then in 96 he won the Olympic bronze medal, and. Slowly, towards the end of that decade, he shifted his focus to doubles, and mm-hmm. again, that was a, probably a, a larger understanding of his body as well right. as the limitations in his, in his game. So he right. he wanted to continue playing at the high level, and he knew that singles is not exactly gonna afford him that. So he shifted to doubles, and and let's just be very clear. And this is this is from the discussions that I've had with Leander Paes also. That it's it's not easy on the body if you are a doubles player either. It you have to be you have to keep it ship shape. You have to be particular about a lot of things. So in Leander's case, he has mentioned how he is very particular about the kind of shoes, the insoles that he uses, the socks, the material of the socks, the microns right. involved in the everything right. is to the T, planned to right. the T. The drinks right. that they take. So this is something that we have spoken about. Uh, many many athletes have spoken about how they they have a mix of uh, it's not like drinking water right. to recover from the thirst. You have a mix of electrolytes. You have to take this much at this this time before match. You have to take this much. So it's it's an exact science that is at play. So when you talk about Rafael Nadal being a physical player, and then he has had a very bad knee issue, and then he has come back from there and he's kept on winning, and he's there right there, so either either number one or number two in in the world ranking. So. It's it's also a result of uh, uh, the technology and the team that's that's surrounded himself. And Nadal right. or Djokovic, for that matter, when they get onto or any player for that matter, when they get onto the podium receiving the trophies, one of the first mm-hmm. things that they do is thank the team. Right. So right. it's it's not a it's not a rhetoric. It's not right. something that they are by hearted. Right. They genuinely mean it because right. without the team, they are not there. So mm-hmm. so. That's 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 a major aspect that I would uh, right. I, I would want to mention here, mm-hmm. which uh, so if you think about the current generation of tennis players stepping up that longevity idea by mm-hmm. threefold, right. and we are talking about I mean we should also mention Serena Williams here. Uh, uh, I mean she is one more than the men, and she has been there almost the same time as Roger Federer. And so, uh, when we when we mention the longevity and stepping up of 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 the level of physicality, the fitness, the finesse in the game, so everything is connected with the step up in the sports science that has happened in the last twenty right. years or so. Right, right. That's the first factor. Yeah, but but there are many which which I would like we would obviously discuss in this. Right, in this right, talk. right, right. So I guess another key aspect is how important it is to actually imbibe many of these lessons at a fairly young stage. And this means that from the very beginning, uh, when you start playing, when you go into the professional circuits, you know you are aware of some of these factors, and you have the right kind of people around you, and you have the right kind of institutional support. So, could you maybe talk a bit about how important that aspect is? So, uh, in tennis, so any for any professional sport for that matter, or any sport that you will pursue at a higher, higher level, uh, uh, they start young. We have to start young. So that's one of the reasons why there are many. Indian athletes across various sports who don't who are unable to step into that that elite level because they they lost years that uh, formative years right, right. crucial years that way so uh, and when you, when you start training these kids so that's that's again two three aspects are there when when kids are being trained one is one aspect is the idea of setting goals hmm. and you set shorter goals as part of training saying we need to win the junior nationals next year or we need to be in the national camp next year uh, or we need to beat this particular opponent or that so those are the shorter plans or we need to reach a certain physical physical fitness level but the the the, the larger idea of a career goal which as kids we talk about right what is your ambition in life what do you want to become in life so that kind of a uh discussion and slow uh, i mean the, the coaching mechanism or the or the mentors who are involved they should imbibe slowly the idea of the larger goal what do you want right. to aim aim right. a, in your career 
so it it begins there so then if you if you have set your sights on on the stars so to speak then obviously you would work towards that and it's an implemental process so when we look at uh, uh, rafael nadal's first french open victory uh, that was in 2005 he was 19 year old then and uh, 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 Djokovic's first victory, which was a couple of years later at the Australian Open, which uh, he was also a teenager then, uh, he was also 19, I believe. Uh, and uh, so, but their tennis journeys, the professional tour journeys, have, uh, might, might have started two, three years before prior to that, but, right. but their journeys in the game started at a much younger age. So, Absolutely. so it would have taken 10, 10 years for them to reach the Grand Slam stage Absolutely. and then a couple of years more to get, get used to the competition and then right. realize their, I mean, establish their credentials as, as, as a serious pro for the future. Right. So, so that journey is set in the mind to start with. So, mm. so you have the right goals in place and, right. and, and then comes the idea of role models around then comes the idea of if there is someone else to emulate and 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 strive for to reach reach that kind of a thing. So uh, when we look at the momentum that Indian sport has gained in certain sport for certain uh, disciplines, for instance, for instance shooting or wrestling, uh, where we have won consistently over the last three four Olympic Games medals, right. Right. Uh, shooter. I mean, we have a huge line of young shooters who. Who could potentially win win the Olympic win an Olympic medal next year when the games are staged? So these uh, this happened after Abhinav Bindra, after Gagan Narang winning right. at the Olympic Games, winning right. medals right. at the Olympic Games. Right. As, uh, even though we had great shooters before that as well, someone like Anjali Bhagwat or mm -hmm. or in shotgun if you have, you had just Rana. Right. So uh, but but that that stepping up never happened till. A role model came up till mm. Rajwadan Singh Rathod won, won a silver, then right. uh, the gold uh, from Abhinav Bindra, and then yeah, it's the momentum has stayed. The right. same thing in in badminton, Saina Nawal's medal, and then after that, we know what has happened in badminton in the country. Exactly. So so that 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 setting of example or uh, having examples around is also a big 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 uh, factor in this. Right. And the last, I mean, uh, as far as the journey, once the journey sa starts, it's it's again, uh, we I mentioned earlier about the idea of team, which which works around that speed to push them further. Right. So then uh, there is this micro increments that is required mm -hmm. to refocus this athlete for a for a bigger goal, for a bigger right. bigger bigger idea. Right. So these are these are small tricks. The mind trick. It can be a target trick. It can be a of course, it can be a very objective target, or it can mm -hmm. be a very subjective target. Like, right. like you need to beat this guy. You need to uh, reach that level, or you need to chase that number. Right. So, so these these small target setting is also uh, important. So, a little earlier this year, in May, in fact, Nadal had spoken about all these things in an interview, uh, saying how uh, I mean various factors are in play for him to continue pushing himself, mm -hmm. but biggest is of course, the passion and passion for me is nothing but but an incremental uh, set of ideas imbibed into you about the game, what you want to do with the game, right. and to uh, it it adds on so much so that ultimately it becomes your life, it becomes your absolute mission, it becomes like Nadal said, passion. So he said, Federer, I, uh, Djokovic, we are all passionate beyond numbers, beyond trophies about the game. Absolutely. And so that's why we keep pushing ourselves. And right. so uh, that that happens right at the formative stage. So Absolutely. Passion is, uh, yeah, of course, self-driven factor is there. But at the same time, passion needs to be imbibed into... into and, into and that there is also, in some senses, at the risk of sounding contradictory, a science to the passion as well. It's not just yeah. exuberance of spirit, but something which is like you said very incrementally planned and uh, there measure, is that measured element. passion i would say you can, exactly, exactly. see that there, there are many tennis players who are very passionate even now if you look at uh, or even in the past who have fell fell down the wayside right. I mean, uh, so uh, it's a uh, passion needs to be reined in it needs to be controlled also Absolutely. so uh, that's that's the that's the whole idea of managing a professional athlete and right. so 
so these athletes though they stand out uh, as as great performers as icons of the generation or for all time uh, there is also a exact science that works around making right. them what absolutely. they are absolutely absolutely right and let's do final question so uh, you did hint at couple of these examples the, the we are the, what about the issue of institutional support from a young age also like we have another example lionel messi who again a very a footballer who has been around for a really long time performed excellently but also was a product of a very very strong system in terms of how uh, say in, in terms of coaching in terms of training badminton itself gopichand's academy has played a very vital role for instance in india and in giving some of that so for instance in india especially do we need many more of these Uh, institutions which can actually provide that level of institutional support so uh, lionel messi's journey is a classic example of how an institution can change your life so messi was picked up from uh, as a talented kid from from rosario in argentina and taken to la masia uh, uh, barcelona's youth academy and it's just he was part of the golden generation of of barcelona and spain because uh, it it was the core team that won spain the world cup was was right. barca players right. and messi's generation of players and uh, the same thing applies to any professional footballer because uh, nobody grows i mean of course raw talent and the uh, raw base is always there but then all these prof- great professional footballers who are playing their trade across the uh, world they are all part of part of one system or the other right. one academy or the other right. of, and there are many who who don't make it there because they couldn't just make that jump at the right time or the right, right place so right, right time is a factor right place is a factor and so that that is the uh, in india when coming back to india that is where the system is not correlated enough so huh. sometimes in certain sport uh, for instance you mentioned badminton mm-hmm. you have the system established but it's 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 also a very i mean it's it's a it's a uh, single entity system it's focused in uh, hyderabad it's a uh, it's great that it has produced a lot of champions but i would say you could do better right because if you if you look at establishing a network of such such Uh, centers because we don't i mean centralized a centralized program is great but centralized program because it gives the uh, mentors or coaches a lot of control uh, controlled environment focus on the players who are there present but then india is a large country the population is huge which we have a lot of talent across the length and breadth of the country right. and we also add badminton pocket pockets around as well so Kochi, for instance, has a great badminton culture, mm-hmm. and many many good players have come out, especially in the doubles circuit from from the Rajiv Gandhi Indoor Stadium training center in mm-hmm. in Kochi. Ba- uh, Bangalore was a center, is a center, but again, the best players are based in Hyderabad. Prakash Padukone Academy, I am talking about, and uh, Vinod Kumar is a coach there in based in Bangalore, and some players, of course, in the national team, they play in Bangalore, but but the elites. the top level all are based in hyderabad right. so uh, one is the establishment of that wide wider network and so that helps in meeting the two factors that i mentioned the right place and the right time exactly so not all uh, athletes or young kids would be like sainal nawal who are willing to uproot themselves from haryana and go to hyderabad and base there and right. i mean uh, there are there are problems like that right. and even if a kid uproots Uh, herself or himself to right. a new city they might not be happy about it then exactly. things so so that is one thing right place and right time so how do you catch the youngsters at the right age to nurture Precisely. them so that, that that these two factors don't come in together at all i mean very rarely it comes and then you see great results for uh, at the international arena so that that is uh, i mean india's uh, sort of a systemic short shortcoming i would say and yeah to the question that you asked earlier uh, the initial setting of the path for this at least no matter how great they are uh, they end up eventually end up being initially it, it, they start at a starting point which is i mean you, you can call it zero point because they have their own talents whatever but that's from there they build it's it's a castle that they're building and it needs strong base from there it it goes up goes up structurally 
uh, and and strength by strength. So that 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 is required, and uh, only then things would. Uh, I mean, we could be we would be able to mold athletes who are not. I mean, not just I mean one off standout performers, but performers uh, at a at a yes. larger, longer right. time span. And another, I mean, one factor that I missed earlier, which I would like to wind up with, with this, is about competition at the right time. So we we talk about Indian system where, of course, I mean, you establish a lot a lot of academies. I'm I'm giving you an arbitrary system, and all these kids are trained. But but then, if they don't get the comp the right competition at the right time, then then it it fails uh, as well. So you're talking about football. So we have a lot of academies. Young kids come up, but then at a certain age, they they don't get the matches that they need to play. So I so I've spoken to coaches from the Netherlands, uh, both football and hockey coaches, where where they mentioned that the real focus should be on giving them match time, right. skills and all. We we teach we 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 but but match time is important because that is where they the they get the muscle memory for for playing. They also understand the dynamics of uh, match. They also develop game intelligence. Right. Uh, so that is important. Match and also the kind of competition. So that takes us to Nadal and Federer and Djokovic. Right. So these three pushed each other. It's very clear. Right. So it's it's like how uh, Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser pushed each other to greatness. So their fights were legendary and they became who they are because they could. Offer each other competition. Absolutely. We always talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, and we always make that comparison with Messi. There is a, I mean, of course, it's a team game. There is no direct rivalry as such, but there is also a indirect pushing involved where they right. they 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 motivate each other to perform, outperform each other. Absolutely. So the same thing applies across any sport. So, right. so we are probably lucky that uh, to see these tennis players reach these heights because in that generation there are two three who would not. Allow the other to rest. So that constant evolution is is something that uh, Nadal spoke about again in that same interview in May, where right. he said uh, they have not rested at a certain level. They kept right. try, chipping on the game so that they get an advantage next time they meet. You lose. Absolutely. Nadal has lost badly to Djokovic in other right. tournaments and right. and really badly. So yesterday after the victory, Nadal right. said sorry, but then you have done the same thing to me at. <laughs> So, right. so, so that's that's that, that's that's a kind of rival. So you lose, right. but you then you then you understand why you lost, and then you right. push yourself. So that's Absolutely. that's 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 uh, so that competition and that idea of rivalry is very key to sporting success and at a larger level to sporting longevity. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leslie, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.